Thank you. So thank you, Carlo. You already told who I am. I'm Helen Kohlen from Germany. I'm a professor for care ethics or care policy and ethics, especially in nursing, at a very small university close to Koblenz, Fallenda, and I'm a visiting professor here. And um, I'm happy to be the chair today. And uh, this one is the second of a series on care ethics and the body. We started this project, Care Ethics and the Body, last year in June, when Barbara Duden had um, a lecture on the history of the body from a care ethical perspective. And the next one will be in April also on care ethics and the body. And then the speaker will be Sophie Bourgeot. Before I introduce Maurice, I would especially like to welcome a guest from the UK. It's Hamish McPherson, a London choreographer who is interested in connecting care with the body. It's good to, be, to have you here. Maurice today will speak first to you and then with you. He told me that he probably needs about an hour and it's not a problem when you have questions in between, raise your hand and we can immediately, he can immediately clarify. And he will talk about a performative theory of care. Maurice Hemmington is the executive director of the uni of university studies and professor of philosophy at Portland State University, right? As a philosopher who specializes in care ethics, he holds five graduate degrees, including two PhDs, one in religion and social ethics from the University of Southern California, and one in philosophy from the University of Oregon. He also received an MBA from <coughs> UC, USC. Correct so far? Yes, yes. Maurice has worked in higher education for 30 years and has served a number of administrative roles. He was department chair of philosophy and political science at the University of Southern Indiana, director of the Institute for Women's Studies and Services, associate dean and associate vice president at Metropolitan State University of Denver, director of the BA program at how is this pronounced? The university? And Antioch. Antioch University, Seattle, and executive deans of the School of Arts and Sciences at Lane Community College, while simultaneously holding a research appointment at the University of Oregon. As a faculty member, Maurice has taught philosophy, women's study, he calls himself a uh, himself a feminist ethicist, and business courses at the undergraduate and graduate level. He edited the volume Socializing Care with Dorothy Miller, among others, other books, and <coughs> he also wrote an article in the Ethics of Care series Moral Boundaries Redrawn, and I especially like the book Embodied Care, Jane Adams, Maurice, Merleau Ponty and Feminist Ethics. Thank you so much to be here. And now the floor is yours. Thank you for the kind introduction. Um, I have a, a little PowerPoint uh, uh, to, to go along with this. It doesn't have uh, um, uh, a lot of uh, technical explanations, but it'll just kind of keep us on track. And as Helen said, if you have questions, um, if I slip into an American idiom that doesn't, isn't clear, um, uh, please raise your hand and, and, uh, uh, and we'll address it. Um, I first just want to say um, thank you from, uh, 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 to Merrill and uh, to the department for bringing me here. It's quite an honor uh, for me and I'm thrilled to be here. And I'm thrilled to be in front of an audience of people who are so well versed in care ethics. This is unusual for me and uh, as I, uh, I've been saying, we don't have anything um, like the kind of program you hear, have here at the University of Humanistic Studies uh, in the States. Um, uh, there are no uh, named positions in care ethics 
uh, there are just individuals um, uh, working separately. So this is uh, wonderful to uh, have a chance to be in this uh, atmosphere. Uh, so my talk is called A Performative uh, Theory of Care, and we will um, explore exactly what that means. Um, the, um, my, my presentation, I don't know if you can read that in the back, but um, uh, uh, I'm going to do a, a couple of introductory items. I'm going to talk about care and ontology, care and epistemology, and care and ethics, uh, in, uh, including uh, what difference uh, does a uh, performative uh, care uh, make. Um, I should say that um, I am a philosopher, you know, by training, and so my work will emphasize the theoretical more than, uh, than anything, but I also uh, am something of a pragmatist um, and, uh, and a feminist, and so experience and applications are, um, uh, are important. Um, and I'll try to uh, in integrate some healthcare uh, examples because I know that's of uh, particular importance here. Um, so, uh, care ethics um, um, is, uh, I'll start by saying, um, is somewhat a postmodern, the way I look at it is a very kind of postmodern um, uh, approach. It's, um, it doesn't really fit uh, traditional categories in, uh, in many different ways. And um, I, I truly believe that we're actually um, on the cusp of a kind of a paradigm shift in thinking when it comes uh, to care ethics. And that's a pretty bold claim. And I know the word uh, paradigm shift is uh, used perhaps uh, too much, but uh, I think it's true when it comes to, uh, uh, to care ethics. It really is a shift in, um, in how we um, think about um, the world, particularly um, morality, but also in other ways. And that's why my talk um, is kind of expansive, and, um, uh, and, I, and I take this kind of performative term because I think that care doesn't, uh, doesn't actually fit a lot of the traditional um, categories. And this is uh, kind of an important um, discussion um, because care is gaining momentum in many ways. Um, it started off as uh, very much a, a very feminist idea on, uh, in, in, in terms of ethics. And, and um, women's history will always be important to its um, development. Uh, but now we're finding um, theorists from all kinds of different uh, fields uh, coming to it. And that's exciting, but it's also, um, there's also some dangers involved in that. Because everybody wants to take care and put it into the categories of their discipline. Uh, and, uh, and sometimes, um, uh, you know, I've... I've reviewed some approaches and I've said, you know, I, and they're all very good. They, they all have something important to add and, and insights. But in some ways, I feel like when they do this, they make care a little bit smaller um, than it can be, a little bit less uh, as comprehensive uh, as, uh, than, it, uh, than it could be because they're they're really trying to fit it into traditional um, approaches. And I think in, in many ways, it's different. Um, I, I really believe it has a, a, a liminal quality. I don't know if you know the, this word liminal, liminality, um, to work at, at the margins of things, to work across categories, to be in between um, uh, categories. And, uh, and I think uh, care does that. Uh, Joan Toronto kind of pointed the way to that when she talked about uh, moral boundaries and transcending uh, those, and and, and I and I think it's very true that um, that care ethics has this kind of liminal um, uh, quality to it. Um, we've um, seen a, a, a tremendous growth in in contemporary um, uh, care ethics in. Uh, 
in political science, uh, political theorizing. Um, we have a, um, a small critical mass of, of, of political theorists who are doing some wonderful work. And, um, and I've enjoyed those conversations and uh, had a chance to participate in some conferences uh, with those folks. But I'm, but I'm also, once again, concerned that they want to take um, care ethics and, and, and use it in, in very um, traditional structures. And I'll talk about some of those more specifically under uh, the categories that I address. And, uh, and I think that uh, that care goes beyond it. And that the fact that we're engaging the body uh, alone is a very kind of a, a radical, I think, a shifting of people's minds about, um, for example, you know, ethics, which has uh, historically been very much a, uh, a cognitive uh, kind of approach to the world, a very abstract um, uh, structuring. And so, in my writing, I uh, have a tendency, particularly of late, of favoring uh, talking about care theory as opposed to care ethics. Only, not that I don't like the word care ethics, it's just that I want to I kind of make it clear and demark the fact that um, I think about care ethics in a very robust way that goes uh, beyond uh, what is traditionally talked about um, in, uh, uh, in ethics. Um, so, uh, just a, you know, a, a little bit to tell you um, where I am I'm coming from on this. And so I'm going to talk about, uh, I'm going to start with care and, um, um, oh, wait, oh, I, I keep forgetting that my, my computer's not uh, hooked up to this. So I, I change something on here and look at the notes that are in there, and it's not the same. Um, I'm going to start by talking about care and ontology. And, uh, you know, ontology is this uh, study of the being, and it's one of those very philosophical kinds uh, of uh, terms. And um, there are a lot of places in the, in the literature um, that talk uh, about ontology, that address ontology. And it, this is a very important uh, point to make about, a very, about an expansive way of thinking about care. Because um, uh, one of the uh, um, foundational ideas that we see a number of theorists um, talking about is that care it has a relational ontology. And, that is not a trivial claim, um, because that means, if, if we truly talk about a relational ontology, that means that um, human beings are fundamentally uh, relational <coughs> beings. We're fundamentally um, caught up in our web of connections uh, with, uh, with other people. Um, there are very few other um, traditional Western theories that have that kind of ontological starting point. And so they're basing, uh, most Western traditions uh, uh, theory are based on a more um, autonomous kind of ontology that we're individuals transacting with uh, one another, exchanging with one another. Uh, and again, I'm not saying that there's not insights to gain from that approach. Um, but to think about ourselves as fundamentally relational is, uh, means that we're starting off from a, a somewhat radical position. Um, there's even you know, some language in feminist theory that talks about human beings as second persons. Second persons. Uh, because we all are the product of um, other people, and whenever we make any decision, it's always within these uh, webs of, uh, of relationships, uh, past, uh, present, uh, and future. And so there's already uh, uh, you know, some of that um, out there. And what I've, um, uh, what I've written about it and tried to contribute is, is the significance of embodiment um, to, uh, to care. And so, not only are we fundamentally uh, relational, but of course, we're embodied beings. And that seems like a rather um, uh, simple kind of claim. Well, of course, we're embodied beings. But again, when you're coming from fields that uh, forget this and, um, and, and address simply 
um, the notion of, uh, of cognition and, uh, and, and, and abstract theory, um, it, it's, uh, they easily um, kind of uh, forget. So um, when I wrote about embodied care, I turned to uh, phenomenology uh, in particular. Uh, and um, the work of Maurice Merleau-Ponty, uh, uh, a uh, French philosopher who's often referred to as a kind of philosopher uh, of the body. And he, he spoke about the body opening up um, our life world. And uh, he would go through uh, notions of perception and, uh, and the senses. And if you think about it, we have bodies that are built to care. And what I mean by that is we have, the, we have these capacities. We are born with these capacities uh, for care. And I like the word capacity because I'm not saying that everybody um, um, always develops their capacity, you know, fully, but we have these capacities um, to care. So, you know, one thing that Merleau-Ponty talks about, uh, for example, is um, focus phenomenon. We have the ability to focus on somebody. Um, you know, you're focused on me right now. If somebody new comes on in the room, we focus on them for a little bit. Uh, if a human being comes into a room and, and you're there by yourself, you focus on them. You're able to foreground um, uh, uh, people and focus on them and address them. And, and that sounds, again, trivial, uh, but uh, you know, if you think about if our bodies had been built differently in this room and the fact that you know, there's lights, and different sounds. If we, if our senses were organized differently, you know, we might be all over the place. Or, uh, but our bodies have these capacities um, to focus, and that is singularly important in the baseline in care, right? Because before you can care for anybody, you have to be able to address them and respond to them and listen to them, and um, you have, uh, and and so. Um, our bodies come with this kind of uh, ability. Um, I can, you know, imagine bodies different, you know, built uh, 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 very differently. And uh, so I, I turn to phenomenology, but then I also turn to pragmatism uh, in developing the notion uh, of embodied care. And um, one of the concepts out of, of pragmatism in the the work of John Dewey and, and other of the, the classic, uh, the classic uh, uh, pragmatists um, out of the United States um, is the idea of, uh, of habit. And um, it, it's an interesting um, notion. Uh, habit for the pragmatists, for Dewey, is not simply um, the, uh, a rote repetition of something. Uh, a habit is an open-ended um, structure of activity. And so um, when I um, have a, uh, uh, a habit, let's say I have a habit of, uh, of greeting you, I, um, uh, I greet you and, and then I may make adjustments and realize that um, maybe uh, people in Holland greet each other differently. Uh, and so I make my adjustments uh, when I'm in that atmosphere. Or um, uh, maybe I... Um, realize that I was uh, too forceful or, or, or it's an open-ended kind of habit that um, can adjust to, um, uh, to, to context. And habits also are not simply um, physical manifestations. They are also, there's also a, 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 a reflective cognitive element uh, to habits. And um, so Habits of care is something that I would talk about there in, uh, in, in the development of this notion of embodied care. And habits of care, um, and in habits of care, um, I may, um, you know, learn how it is to respond to somebody, to um, uh, ask, you know, how they are, and uh, make adjustments in those in those habits um, uh, accordingly. And I have uh, a body that um, can help me. Um, uh, do that uh, that kind of uh, that kind of thing. Um, I uh, 
I once wrote a, um, a chapter of a book um, where I described washing my daughter's hair. And um, uh, my daughter, who is now uh, 24, hates that uh, story. Because uh, uh, I, I wrote it when she was like, you know, uh, six. And um, she was in the bathtub and was washing, uh, you know, washing her hair. And uh, we would probably be having a, um, uh, a conversation uh, about something. And um, uh, I'd, I'd be washing her hair. And, and um, in it, um, there would be a kind of embodied uh, connection, a kind of implicit body um, understanding, uh, where um, I was telling her that I loved her and cared for her in ways that were implicit, right? Not explicit. Um, I wasn't necessarily at that moment saying those words, but my body is built in such a way that I could communicate that uh, by the way I was touching your hair, by the sound of my voice, by the posture, how I was carrying my body uh, in a certain way, there is uh, there is there is a way to um, to communicate, and then you know that same body. Maybe um, uh, an hour later, I might be you know in the in my garage uh, uh, working with hammer and nails, you know, and treating things differently. But we know how to adjust um, for the particular context, and our bodies know this. So another thing that you know I'm, I'm talking about in terms of embodiment is these, uh, the embodied knowledge. And those can be um, uh, uh, you know, a, a kind of a, um, a habit of, of, uh, of care and, uh, and understanding, habits of bodily comportment that we have and, and use in different kinds of, uh, uh, of contexts. And so embodiment is, is, uh, is crucial. Um, in, in, in all kinds of ways, um, uh, in, uh, in the caring relationship. And it is, it is really kind of foundational. It's how we know about care is, uh, is through um, the body. Um, in, uh, in fact, in, um, uh, we don't have uh, you know, necessarily childhood classes um, about what the word care means. It is something people learn metaphorically, um, uh, and it's 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 seldom explicit. It's usually um, in more of this implicit way, and um, uh, and uh, through uh, through the body. The body is also important because it allows me to have this kind of um, unspoken uh, connection with other embodied uh, beings because we all. Um, inhabit the earth with bodies, that gives me a baseline understanding of, the, of another person. Um, it is another element in this, this struggle, a uh, theoretical struggle that goes on all the time between the concept of the one and the many. And it's phrased differently in, uh, in different fields, but this idea that you're um, you know, you're different than me, so how could I ever know anything about you? And what could I really know about you? Because you're, you're a different being. Well, if you, if you come to this notion that we're actually, rela you know, relational, and that we're also, um, we share this uh, embodiment, then we start with this groundwork of, uh, of knowledge, and we can build from there. Um, I would never, you know, claim that I know exactly you know, what another person feels, uh, anything like that. I think th those are dangerous kinds of words to have that kind of ownership. But I certainly can go a long way to uh, making a connection and meeting them through our, our shared embodiment. So for example, if you, uh, you know, if, uh, if I met somebody um, who um, uh, I did not share language with, and um, I didn't share customs with, um, uh, didn't, uh, didn't share religion, or uh, didn't 
have any of those um, social connections with, and um, I saw them um, slip and hit their head on the ground, I don't have to wonder, wow, I wonder if that hurts for them. You know, that's a silly question, right? Because I have that baseline kind of embodied knowledge. And um, it's, uh, it's a starting place um, uh, for embodied beings in, uh, as, a, as a place um, uh, for understanding. Um, so uh, this is part of what I want to say, you know, ontologically. We have this, uh, we're relational beings. Uh, we also uh, uh, share embodiment. And, um, uh, but also, um, there's this uh, uh, notion of a, a, a kind of a performative identity. And I think it's, it's kind of a natural next step. So, um, I draw a lot here on the, the work of uh, Judith Butler. Um, and, and, oh, yes. I just, I... It's not a question about a medium, although I suppose in some ways it is, but th this embodied being sounds a bit tautological. Why, why, the, why the reason to put embodied in front of being? I mean, are there unembodied beings? Um, What's your view on this? Oh, I know it's a typical phenomenological um, idiom, I suppose. Embodiment. Yeah, you're right. It is. Uh, you're absolutely correct. It, it, in, in a certain way, it is redundant, but um, I'm trying to um, bring emphasis to the embodied part, of it, right. right? And so um, there, uh, I think um, there are a lot of fields, um, a lot of work, uh, you know, for example, that's done in philosophy, where we just completely forget about <coughs> the fact that people are, have bodies, you know. And so even though they don't say you know, brain beings or mental beings, that's what they imply. Right. Um, so, so you're right, in, in terms of language, it is, it is redundant. It's, I'm just using it as a term of emphasis. In a political way, then? Um, yeah, it, yeah, in a communicative way, right. to, to, you know. Uh, yeah, so, yeah. Okay. Did you want to say something about that? Yeah. Oh. I see you. Uh, like <laughs> Well, I, I'm, I'm a little bit more puzzled about the word ontology. Okay. Uh. Um, yeah. Because, well, why do you need ontology? Isn't, isn't it, uh, especially when you, you, you answer Alice's question in this way, it's a political notion, it's about emphasis, and that's what you do by uh, terms, by categories. Um, oh. So my turn, oh, my turn to ontology is um, to say that something is more more is going on about uh, when we talk about care than just uh, normative ethics, um, and and, um, and so um, that's it's it's a counter. Yeah, uh, these are all kind of like um, linguistic nuances, right? And so, um, yes, the, uh, the embodied beings, in some ways, that maybe that didn't, um, uh, you know, had a particular reason uh, for it. And um, uh, the turn to ontology is because I want to say that the ethics of care has a lot more going on, you know, uh, for it. And it has something to do with um, who we are, who we are fundamentally as, uh, as beings, human beings. make this a note of this and maybe it's interesting for a discussion later on yes. after this clarification to, to come back to the to the issue of ontology. Of ontology. Mm -hmm. What do we need an, an ontology? Yeah, it's a, it's, it's a very good, good it, question. It struck me also, Maurice, if I miss it, that you're not talking about happily about anthropology. I mean, thank God for that. Um, <laughs> but uh, we, we might have the same problems using the word ontology. So, I mean, there is really a discussion possible. Yeah, very much so. I, I, no, I, could, uh, I could see that. But I, I, I really wonder for what kind of problem in your head, in your back of your head, so you, uh, you 
want to stress it. I mm. have heard the answer. I mean, I, I can see that. Um, care ethics is much broader than uh, just uh, normative ethics. It has a, something deep down there which is uh, very important and don't start with normative ethics immediately. But uh, what, what's the reason that you turn to ontology for that? I mean, deep down, there are all kinds of solutions for going deep down. Uh, so I, but maybe later on in the discussion. You have to make a decision, now or later on? <laughs> <laughs> for me, later on, it's okay on later on. Later on? Okay, good. Okay. Um, so, uh, so, um, uh, we're still on the subject of ontology, and um, the, uh, the, 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 the next thing I want to say is, is uh, this kind of, uh, it, within ontology here, uh, um, a notion of, um, uh, of identity, and um, um, this is where I turn to the work of, uh, of Judith Butler. So, um, Judith Butler um, uh, claimed... Uh, took an interesting um, kind of theoretical term, turn when she um, uh, said that um, um, our gender is, um, uh, is performative. Uh, she made this turn because she didn't like the notion of being biologically determined um, because that um, has uh, certain uh, problems uh, with it. And she didn't like the notion of socially constructed, um, uh, and so she uh, 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 determination, and so she developed this notion of uh, performativity, an idea that has been around for a long time, and she just took it in a particular kind of way, where <clears throat> um, she provided a kind of a home for um, uh, a bit of autonomy uh, in. Um, uh, in, uh, in terms of gender, but also continue to negotiate against um, social forces. And it's this notion of, of performativity. And, and, uh, and what she says is that when it, com when it comes to gender, we make small decisions every day that determine um, what our, uh, our gender is. And that those decisions, the iterations of those collectively are what um, is this dynamic sense of gender, and um, and it is responding to the biological. It's responding to the socially constructed, um, but it is more than that. It, it is this these you know it's it's all these um, um, iterations of decisions, um, uh, little things about how you present yourself, how you display yourself. Um, how you comport yourself, um, all um, collectively um, uh, come to this. And, um, and, and so uh, I was intrigued by this, um, uh, this notion, and, um, and it seems to me that uh, there, in, in terms of care, uh, um, there is a way that we also create a kind of um, identity for ourselves. Uh, call it an ethical um, identity for ourselves through the iteration of um, uh, many um, uh, decisions. And these, the, these iterations of decisions, because we're embodied beings, these are physically performed and um, they are um, witnessed by ourselves and um, others. They occur in time and space, and, and when we um, perform care um, and witness it, that means it's, it's, uh, it's something then that is subject for uh, reflection, um, possible habituation, um, and, um, uh, and so it's, it's this very, um, you know, kind of dynamic uh, process of, uh, of creating uh, a, a kind of a, a dynamic. And, um, and it's also uh, a performance that um, uh, a, um, can lead to uh, a kind of aesthetic of care. Um, what, it, what is it uh, that, um, 
is uh, being performed, what is um, ultimately uh, beautiful about care. Um, there is this dramaturgist in the UK named James Thompson, and um, I have a small quote uh, from him about uh, this notion of an aesthetics of care uh, in a very recent article. He said, an aesthetics of care is therefore a sensory ethical practice that involves not only learning how to be attentive and patient, how to listen and respond, but how also to rethink our own attitudes about difference and, and exclusion. And even within that small quote, there's this kind of circular um, uh, uh, practice that goes between the body, the other, there's a notion of reflection in here, and um, uh, in, in, in developing uh, this, this, uh, uh, this kind of an aesthetic of care. So, um, um, uh, so this is ultimately this is what I'm getting at, at um, uh, in terms of a, uh, a performative um, uh, theory of uh, uh, theory of care. And I'll say a little bit yeah, more as we uh, let me get into. Uh, Next, uh, the next section. Um, so there is also an epistemological uh, uh, dimension to um, uh, care. Um, the uh, there is a inherent um, relationship between um, knowing and uh, and caring. Um, this is a I think a common sense kind of idea that um, when we um, care about somebody, uh, we want to know more about them, we want to gain knowledge uh, about them, and conversely, when um, we uh, learn more about somebody, we open up the possibility of caring for that person. Um, through that knowledge, connection is made, and. Care. And that's why I always think about care as a form of inquiry. And this knowledge is not uh, simply propositional knowledge. I mean, there can be facts involved, but it can also be uh, quite, uh, the knowledge can be both implicit and explicit. Um, it can be um, uh, very subtle kinds of things that your uh, muscle memory and your body knows uh, in the process of doing this, uh, uh, in the process of caring. Um, and if you think about it, if being responsive is one of the measures of being, of providing care, if we think about care as a continuum, uh, and the, the, uh, the more responsive somebody is, the more um, the more caring it comes across, it is, it is uh, perceived as such. Um, the, uh, the more knowledge you have about that person, the more particular you can make it. I've often thought about care as being very particularist in a certain way, in that um, you really need to know the, the context uh, and the situation of the individual in order to, um, uh, in order to care for them. Um, that also, you know, re requires gaining knowledge uh, about them. It requires a form of inquiry uh, to do so. Um, the that's what makes a lot of the, uh, the 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 bigger policy decisions around care uh, difficult because those oftentimes need to be generalized, and uh, and so they may or may not be perceived as. Uh, providing a depth of care by the, the people receiving it. Um, uh, but uh, the more individualized it, it can be. This knowledge is also, um, can be very affective knowledge. Um, and, uh, and also, um, it, it can also disrupt uh, uh, people's lives. Um, and, and so I'm, you know, sometimes I'm pulled into caring uh, to somebody uh, my routines are disrupted 
because the sudden uh, important connection has been made, and uh, and I you know I see this need, and and um, uh, and we don't often talk about um, knowledge in those kinds of ways. This um, this also you know fits with thinking about an aesthetic of care, then, because what do we do in the arts? Um, for example, we um, um, uh, we highlight the uh, the affective right um, often. Times and um, there uh, and uh, the appreciation of aesthetics is often a uh, comes with a, a kind of affective insight and to care deeply is to also provide that kind of um, uh, that kind of uh, uh, affective um, insight. Um, the so. Let me uh, let me throw in an example here uh, that you know might help with some of uh, some of this. Um, a few years ago, there was a documentary made in uh, in the United States. It was called Rolling, and it what they did was um, they gave um, several people um, who were in uh, wheelchairs video cameras, and uh, they took about 300 hours uh, worth of footage and um, uh, put it together as a way to um, uh, explain to healthcare workers uh, what it's like, uh, what the perspective is like uh, for somebody who is in a, a wheelchair. And um, the, uh, the um, it, it was, it, it embodied a lot of what we're talking about here. It was a, a, a kind of a, a way of, of making a connection um, uh, where there was none in the past, and um, the video itself created a kind of um, uh, embodied experience of uh, of the care. I've also heard of um, some programs where they actually put you know healthcare workers and have them in a wheelchair for a long period of time to see what that uh, is like. Um, so, yeah, that would be a, a kind of example. Um, let me then finally get all the way back around to, uh, to ethics. Um, so, I said that care was more than just um, ethics and um, you know, claimed that it had this kind of ontological dimension to it, this epistemological uh, dimension to it, but I, um, but it is also has uh, an ethical dimension to it. And one of the things that um, you know, I worry about is um, just seeing it as a normative approach of, uh, to ethics. And so some folks like to talk about, do we have a, uh, a, a duty to care, uh, for example? And I'm, I would only um, talk about a duty to care in terms of um, an internal compulsion, an internal kind of established um, duty, not an external one. Um, and, um, uh, you know, for authenticity, uh, uh, for the depth of it, it really has to come from the, in the, the person themselves. You, you know, you can legally be um, uh, compelled uh, to care. It could be, you know, your role, it could be your job uh, uh, to do it. And sometimes just being in that role uh, brings you to a certain equilibrium with, uh, with that role. Um, but um, to truly care, it is something that, um, you know, that, that comes from it within and, and makes that kind of um, connection. And so when it comes to the question of normativity, uh, what is the right thing to do? Um, in care ethics, it really emerges uh, from the relationship. I don't entirely know, going into the relationship, what the right thing to do is. I can bring a disposition of care to it. Um, I may have ideas about it going in. But if I'm true to the particularist nature of, of care, if I'm true to wanting to respond to this, um, this other embodied being, um, I need to 
do the research and be open to the fact that uh, the right thing to do is um, going to be a kind of um, discovery, uh, again, back to inquiry, a kind of discovery that occurs in, in, uh, within the relationship. Um, I also like to mention that I never think of care as, um, as altruism. Um, it's, I know that word is used um, uh, uh, a lot of times, but because it is inquiry, because I think there's always this gain to be made, if it's, even if it's just a, a, a knowledge gain, I don't think of care as altruism. And also, um, I'm worried about you know, um, burning out the caregiver the caregiver who um, is only uh, um, other directed, and um, and this was the cons this was the early concern of feminists, right? Because of the history of uh, women being burdened with care. Um, I have a bit of difficulty trying to understand internal compulsion. Mm -hmm. How does that relate to ontology, and how does it relate to performativity? Um, so here, uh, well, I wasn't talking here as much about ontology. Here, I was talking more about the ethical um, part. And what I'm what I'm saying about in, internal compulsion is more of um, to separate the idea of care from um, the abstract normativity that comes with um, most ethical systems. No, I, I understand that. Okay. Um, I could argue that, um, especially if, if, if you're uh, somebody who's, uh, who thinks all, all behavior is in some sense performative, mm -hmm. that there is no such thing as an internal compulsion. Or even that, that divide between external and internal wouldn't make any sense, both in an epistemological and ontological. Um, you know, maybe maybe the words internal compulsion weren't the best ones to choose. But I, what I was the distinction I'm trying to just make is um, uh, there. Um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure somebody can um, order you to care uh, deeply about something. Um, you know, um, it, it, it could be my job to provide a level of care, and I'll provide that level of care. Um, but uh, for me to go beyond that, um, to really make a connection with somebody, um, I'm saying I, I think it has to be, you know, uh, in, there has to be this kind of internal motivation, not some kind of external rule, for example. Yeah, but, but couldn't the compulsion also be... Uh, based on a reiteration of uh, the dynamic between you and the one you care for, as in a performative mm -hmm. dimension yeah. of that compulsion. Because sure. Internal seems to me to imply uh, as if it's sort of um, an, an insular in some, in some, some way. Okay. Well, I, I think that's fair, and I wouldn't. I wouldn't. And I wouldn't want to make that implication. So I think that's fair. That and, and so maybe the word internal is not quite the right word here. But what I'm, I was just trying to get away from that kind of external. <coughs> okay. um, so you know, in 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 thinking about um, presenting this kind of idea, because I'm trying to move between um, you know, who we are, this question of who we are, what we know, and um, what, is, you know, what is the right thing to do, um, it's hard to present care ethics if you want to hold all those things together in a linear kind of way. They kind of like move back and forth. Um, in, uh, between them. There's implications for being an embodied being, uh, uh, performances, and, and holding this all together. And so it's, it, it, always, it almost seems like an awkward presentation to go in a linear fashion because there are these uh, the different components that are kind of integrated uh, into one another. 
So let me just um, uh, conclude by, um, you know, reiterating that again. I, I I think it's a it's something of this of a paradigm shift about thinking of how these all fit together, and um, because it's a paradigm shift, it would really cause us to rethink how we. Uh, for example, honor this in our society. How do we teach this in, in our society? Um, it would take some innovation to hold the various pieces um, uh, together. Um, so a couple of years ago, I, I tried to, to uh, put my money where my mouth is. That's an American idiot. Do you know that word? Does that make sense? Okay. Uh, so, um, so, um, uh, I taught a course uh, for undergraduates called uh, uh, Performative Ethics. And what I did in this course was um, I had them do a series of readings. It was a, uh, it was a 10 week course. We did a, a, a series of, of readings on, including on care ethics and the body and, and um, these notions of, of a relational ontology and all this kind of stuff. Um, but corresponding to the reading, because that doesn't sound very innovative, that's just a class. Um, but corresponding uh, to those readings, we did a series of uh, dramaturgical exercises. And so um, we basically got them using their bodies. And these were students, it was a, a, a multidisciplinary course so these were students that were not uh, just philosophy students, or lower philosophy students. They were not theater students. Um, they weren't uh, just women's study students, although there were some women's study students. So it was a, it was a mix. And uh, we started slow. We, the exercises began with uh, just kind of meditations and awareness of the body and moved to more kind of um, body positioning, body sculpting exercises, um, and uh, used um, exercises that, that uh, some activist uh, dramaturgical um, scholars have, uh, have employed. And um, toward the end of the class, got to the place where the students were comfortable doing improvisations around um, situations, um, you know, very uh, kind of concrete situations, um, and, and some that they would develop themselves out of what they were studying, and, um, uh, and analyzing um, embodiment, how they moved, how they spoke with one another, how did they comport themselves, um, but also, um, you know where the care, uh, you know, came from, and, and how the, the how the care was, um, uh, you know, was it present? Uh, was it not present? Um, how were they treating, you know, uh, uh, each other uh, in those um, uh, in those situations? Um, and then, um, and then a unique thing happened in that class. Um, I was very nervous about teaching that class because I had no theater background. And um, it was a real stretch for me. Um, I'm, you know, used to a more traditional class, um, even if it was, um, you know, even if there was a lot of discussion in it. Um, and um, the students uh, became a very tight knit uh, community. The fact that they had to risk of themselves in front of each other in this context of talking about care, um, made them really go deep with the subject on one hand, but also created a caring community of, uh, of itself. And in the end, they did uh, presentations that addressed some of the very difficult and violent things in their lives uh, that you know, brought people to tears uh, 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 at the end. 
And um, I think that this is just one example and perhaps an imperfect example, but um, of how we might have to rethink um, you know, um, some of these ideas if we, if we take this, this notion of uh, embodied care um, uh, seriously. Um, but I'm not sure that it makes sense to teach ethics in, the, in a strictly kind of abstract uh, uh, kind of way that it has traditionally been done. Well, it's a, um, well, I mean, to experience. I would be happy to share, I've written a couple of articles about that particular experience, and I'd be happy to share those articles with you. In order, in terms of experiencing it, it really, so, you know, one of the interesting things about care is care has a strong temporal dimension to it, right? Um, there is a uh, time and, the, and time and proximal knowledge, proximity, uh, makes a big difference. And, uh, and so, you know, we could do one of the exercises, but it wouldn't be exactly the same, right? Because we started off together, and, you know, the, the first day of class, it was this, them talking about, I never, I never sat in class and thought about my body before, you know? And, because we were doing a meditation at first, and, they, and that, that alone was just, kind of startling for them because, um, I don't know if it's true here, but it, you know, we basically treat students as talking heads most of the time. You know, they, they, they just, you know, they walk in and they, and they, and they, and they talk and, and they leave and, and we don't, you know, we don't explicitly address the body. So what I'm saying is uh, we, could, we, we could do one of it, but I, I don't know that it would be the same kind of experience because That's okay. you, you would, you know, have to um, uh, you know uh, take people um, a long uh, way. But if you if you want to, uh, we could we could do some uh, we could do some moving around. We could try something so, uh, uh, if you'd like to do something like that. Um, so uh, the point there is that you know education I don't think can be a, a, a purely kind of um, abstract thing, and then. I want to. I just want to uh, say that um, back a little bit to the aesthetic. That, uh, and, I, and I said it before. Um, care is an extremely difficult and challenging ethic. In some ways, um, you know, um, the the traditions are uh, a lot easier. You have to do a lot more work, and that a lot more work is sometimes labeled as being much more subjective. Uh, and that, you know, and that is true, but that doesn't mean that it is not, you know, any more valuable. But with that work um, can be uh, a lot of, uh, of beauty. There's a certain, again, kind of aesthetic uh, to care. Um, we don't often talk about it that way. And there can be a big gap between some of the, you know, the horrible, horribly difficult things that have to be done um, in order to care uh, for somebody. Um, but there is a certain beauty to it. Maybe not that, uh, it's one of those, it's more like an abiding kind of beauty, maybe than um, uh, a singular kind of spectacular beauty. But, um, but it's there, I think, in, uh, in the activities uh, of care. And so um, I also think that this can be a um, this can also be a kind of uh, a joyful endeavor for those who undertake it. All right. So okay. So how do we do? It's it's, it's an hour. hour. No, you have ten more minutes left if you want to fill the full hour. But ten <laughs> hours. Oh, we didn't start at two. <laughs> no, ten. Oh, I see. Okay, right. Okay. Yes. Uh, so, do you want to take a break and then questions, or you, is that what you would like to do? Maybe some clarifying questions first, and then we go into the discussion. Yes. Um, 
I have a question. I wanted to know, because it's for me not really clear, is the aesthetics, is it an integral part of the theory that you're presenting, or is it more something like an extra perspective uh, that you want to draw our attention to, like, hey, care can also be an aesthetic? Well, I think how it's part of the theory. Um, I think that if, um, if it is indeed performative, then there is an aesthetic there, you know. And, um, uh, and so then, do we, uh, do we highlight it and explore it? Um, and so, uh, I'm working, for example, with a, uh, with a poet right now, and trying to think about what it is, a, what is it about reading poetry, experiencing poetry, the performance of poetry, is there something there um, a habit of um, a affective attunement uh, that is something that can contribute to somebody's, you know, care uh, uh, identity. So, so I think, um, uh, you know, I, I think it's there. And why wouldn't you call it a spiritual then? Because it's a well-performed act, so you would also think, perhaps, of Language. <coughs> Certainly, uh, this this is uh, something that's been discussed with about care ethics uh, from its inception. Uh, it shares a great deal uh, with uh, with virtue ethics, um, and uh, particularly around the fact that virtue ethics isn't as caught up with uh, you know normative adjudication. The, um, but um, uh, you know, I, I kind of agree with Nell Noddings on this point. Um, the, the unit of focus in care is the relationship. Um, I've been focusing a lot on, you know, the individual development, but it's always in relation. And uh, virtue theory doesn't seem to emphasize that nearly as much. And, um, you know, and, and sometimes, um, Virtue theory can um, devolve into, you know, something didn't happen because the virtue wasn't developed in them, you know, enough or something. Uh, and so, um, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to disagree that it, it shares a lot with virtue ethics, um, but it does seem to also be something a little bit different. I'm not sure whether you are the next one. Well, first, thank you for your beautiful talk. Uh, I haven't understood yet why you call it performative theory of care, other than practical theory of care. For what do you mean by performative theory? I think, um, I mean, you're right that uh, it, it also is, is kind of practical. Um, but um, the reason I, I, I was attracted to this notion of performativity is um, that um, is, is Butler's notion that in the performance I am authoring who I am in a sense and and I think that the, the, the performativity um, again brings that out that in this performance I am doing the action I'm also witnessing the action and I have the ability to reflect on that action. And so um, it's contributing to my self-identity. So that's why I like that. I think Francis. Could you explain a little bit more why you use the heading of um, identity? Mm -hmm. Because in the, the article, it's even more developed or stressed than, than what you did just now. There's something uh, that's important to you why you use the word identity, not the subject, or, but there is something <laughs> this is very important to you that um, to use the word identity. This, this perhaps has a parallel to your earlier question, is um, because, uh, again, I, I'm trying to lay out a care 
an idea about care, a theory about care that is, um, you know, more than just normative ethics. And I, and I think it fundamentally goes to um, who we are, and it, it's, 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 and there's this kind of beautiful tension, I think, between, you know, we can make these. We, we can make these we can make these decisions about who we are, but it's always in relationship. So it's always it's always mediated, um, and um, and so this idea of identity is is cut up in these in, in these um, in these moral relationships. And so uh, this is why I say care ethics is, is postmodern. There there are so many things pushing at each other in this, and and so you know I'm saying on the one hand you know it's not it's not individualistic, and yet there's a role for individuals to develop themselves, but it's all in, in, in relationship. And, um, and so I can see why people don't like it, because it doesn't fit in the nice categories that we always have. And, uh, and, yet, um, and yet it comes together in the bodies of, of uh, individuals. Um, so uh, it's not a... I don't know if that's a great answer, but um. <laughs> yeah. So I have a question, but I'd like to thank you as well. I think your work sort of lays the groundwork for our more empirical work, especially if you view this as more sort of an epistemology of care theory. Um, I was wondering, and you just alluded to that, that this you say care ethics is postmodernist. Uh, I can see that in a sort of sense that it's a discontinuation of modernist thought. Um, at the same time, Franz and I just uh, uh, submitted an article talking about care ethics and late modernity and the fact that it doesn't take late modernity or hyper modernity or whatever you want to call it uh, into account. So I was really curious what your view is of late modernism as care is performed in late modern societies and um, how that differs from uh, your view of uh, a theory of care being postmodern. Uh, yeah, and, and that's a good question because I should have clarified more. I, I, I just think it's, it's postmodern in this particular way. Right. And that is the, you know, in, the, in, the, um, in terms of the, the transcending uh, uh, category. Yeah. 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 So, um, so uh, there are other ways where I can completely see what you know the direction that you're going in. So I have a, I'm calling it postmodern in a very narrow, you know, um, um, kind of uh, way. I, I don't, I, I like, um, I like the way that you led into your question uh, because you said uh, that uh, you know, um, uh, you know about epistemology and your more empirical work, and uh, and that's. Kind of another interesting thing I think about care is okay, so care is responsive, you know, to the individual and it needs to be experienced uh, particularly, but it also, in a way, needs to be responsive to evidence and and social evidence and in what's going on. And so, um, I'm not just I'm not just uh, you know doing what this person wants or, or you know even in the particular needs. I have to I have to also take into consideration the you know what's out there, and so uh, yes, I mean I think uh, uh, there is there is that dimension. Uh, to it. Yeah, well, you know, yeah, because that relates to, to what you wrote in your uh, chapter. Maybe it relates to it to on autopoiesis. I was wondering what uh, what is exactly involved within that process of. Autopoiesis, uh, people, but also things, or maybe habits, or, and how do they constitute care? So, you know, I, um, I'm borrowing this language. Autopoiesis is this, it's used in, you know, system thinking about these dynamic, um, you know, organizations that can um, self, uh, what, self correct and grow. Um, uh, uh, kind of things, and that's a 
again, kind of what I'm trying to do with the performative, right? It, you know, is is I can I can act, I can reflect on that act, I can experience that act deeply, and um, uh, and uh, and grow and and, and self-author myself. There is, in, you know, there is a notion of growth that's kind of bound in uh, uh, in here as well. Um, but that is seen from your perspective. Because you also say, I can, you understand? Right. And you are looking. Yeah, and then, but it's all, but yes, I, I can. <coughs> but that I is all, is always, there's always a kind of little we in there, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, because it's all, it's all done, you know, in, uh, um, uh, in relationship. And so you never, you never really get away with that. I, mean, I can I can see I can see why you know th there's so much to be critical of here because you're trying to hold together so many uh, you know so many um, uh, pieces uh, uh, together um, and uh, it, it uh, and what you're doing you know with evaluation I think is uh, part of that that bigger responsiveness that needs to that needs to be uh, present so. I'm in a relationship with an individual, but we don't want to just talk about care in terms of dyads, right? There's always other, there's always other we's involved, and I think evaluation can bring the voice of the, of the others into that. I have one more question. You've talked a lot about the beautiful and aesthetics, and then you have the word difficult. Can you say a little bit more about this difficult? Uh, uh, the difficult, um, you know, it's uh, it's not easy to care. Um, we have, a, you know, we have a we have a terrible homeless problem in the United States, and um, we um, and so there are people constantly. Um, you know, if you live in any big city, uh, I live in Portland. You constantly have uh, people panhandle, panhandling you. If, 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 um, you walk the streets, and so um, you know what is care in that context. I could, I mean, the easy thing to do is you know I could take out a few dollars and, and hand it to them. You know, uh, that's not it's a very superficial kind of care. But uh, if I really want to care for that person, I have to take on the risk. I have to take on the emotional risk, possibly physical risk, but of, and I have to take the time. So that's all the difficulty, you know, wrapped into it. I'm, I'm going to have to, um, you know, uh, do this, make this connection uh, with this person, knowing full well that the result of it may cost me even more. I mean, you know, in some, in some sense. So um, care, I, I think, can be very uh, challenging, and, and sometimes it, it's easier. You know, <coughs> to do other things. I, uh, another quick example from, from uh, academia is we have you know, students from all different levels of preparation, all different socioeconomic backgrounds uh, in school. And um, sometimes uh, we have teachers who want to have uh, rules for all the, the students that are the same. And they say, I am fair. I'm teaching, I'm treating all of my students the same. It's fair, it's justice, right? It's fair. Is it caring? We have, uh, we have, we actually have homeless students, um, you know, who, and, uh, and sometimes things happen to them, and maybe they can't get their paper in on time because, you know, something happened. Or, and, um, and so, do you, do you take into consideration their situation uh, in a way that is caring uh, and yet, you know, upholds some sense of fairness at the same time? That takes work. Isn't it easier just to say, it's all the same? Thank you. So let's.